Treasury Stock Basics Problem 1. Assume the following information for ore and zinc. Common stock, $1 par, 228,000 shares issued, 193,000 shares outstanding, paid in capital in excess of par common, $1,780,000, retained earnings, $2,600,000, Treasury stock, 35,000 shares purchased at $15 per share. If Orange purchases an additional 14,000 shares of Treasury stock, at $24 per share. What number of shares will be shown as issued and outstanding? So this is one of the students' students' favorites. Favorite, favorite type of questions. There's a lot of information, but once you once you really dial it down, you'll see it's not that bad at all. And I'm going to teach you a, a visual diagram or a visual way to understand the difference between the number of shares authorized, the number of shares issued, and the number of shares outstanding. And it will really help you with this question. This question is just asking, what will be the number of shares shown as issued and outstanding? And of course, we're going to have treasury stock. That's usually, if you're asked these types of questions, almost always you're asked about there's going to be treasury stock involved with these questions. You're given lots of dollar amounts, the number of shares issued, outstanding, all this stuff going on. Now, I like to think of authorized versus issued versus outstanding shares as the layers of the earth or a jawbreaker. Let's just draw the earth, whatever you prefer. I like, I like candy. Some people like to think of it like the earth. You've got the crust, the mantle, and the core. Let's draw a globe. Boom. And then within the globe, we're going to have another. And then another. And I'm going to put a 1, a 2, and a 3. So on the outermost layer, which is 1, this is where you find the authorized shares of stock. And the idea here is that the larger or the, the outer the layer, the more it encompasses the others. So that means that authorized is going to be larger than, than issued and outstanding because number two is going to be issued and number three is going to be outstanding. So the idea is that authorized encompasses issued and outstanding. Issued encompasses outstanding shares. That's the idea. That's why it's this, this inclusive. Authorizing is, is the, the largest possible ever, issued is next, and then outstanding is the least, but it's also the most important of the three different um, classifications of, of the stock. Authorized stock, which in a lot of questions, you're not told what the authorized shares are. Authorized is what's laid out in the corporate charter, the most number of shares that can be ever issued going forward. Now, this can be amended by the board directors or by the actual stockholders or shareholders, depending on the size of the corporation and the rules in place under the, the corporate charter, under the corporate bylaws, the rules. The authorized is what is the most that at, that's set out in the corporate bylaws, corporate charter at that time. If it can change in the future, and it's very rare it will change um, unless the corporation expands and gets extremely large, which we know that most businesses that are small don't really go get that large. They actually end up not staying around for that long. So authorized is like the hypothetically what can ever become issued. Issued is what's actually printed. The corporation has printed those stock certificates out. Of course, in the digital age, they don't actually get printed, but maybe they get a, uh, a barcode or a chip or something that there's a unique identifier with that. Outstanding is simply going to be issued shares minus treasury. Issued minus treasury. And you might recall treasury stock is when the corporation buys back its own shares of stock. So treasury is really important. Here we're told if Orange purchases an additional 14,000 shares of treasury stock, so right there, boom, 14,000 shares of treasury stock, in addition to the ones already of 35,000, that's going to increase the number of treasury stock, and that means that issued minus that increased treasury stock affects outstanding. So that's what this question is all about. Now, one thing to note is that of these three, outstanding is by far the most important because when you're calculating dividends, you always use outstanding. There's other reasons why you might use outstanding as well, but that's that's most important is that for dividends, whether you're calculating cash dividends, stock dividends, you do these on the outstanding shares because you're not going to give a dividend to the corporate, you know, it's, it's like moving, it's like taking money from one of your pockets and putting it in the other. If a corporation owns shares of stock, why would it pay itself a cash dividend when it already owns those shares of stock? It's going to, in terms of treasury, treasury stock, it's going to pay itself, you know, that money. No, it's going to do it on the outstanding shares. And that's why outstanding is so important with respect to dividends, which is a huge aspect of these items. So to calculate the number of uh, shares issued and outstanding, to calculate that, well, 
we start with 228,000 shares issued. We're told that. Okay. Assume the following that there's 228,000 shares issued. Nowhere are we told that the number of shares increase. We don't issue more shares of stock. There's nothing in here. We're told paid in capital and access of par is a certain amount, retained earnings. Those numbers, because we're looking at the number of shares, we can ignore those. But then we are told treasury stock. And that is important. That's very important. 35,000 shares of treasury plus 14,000 shares of additional treasury. Now, the issued shares. That's going to be $228,000 even in the end, even after we've gone through the treasury stock. Because remember, outstanding is issued minus treasury. So if the issued shares, which haven't changed since we're told at the beginning, $228,000, which is the correct answer for the issued, we subtract away the sum, the sum of the $35,000 that we were told plus the $14,000 additional treasury stock that were purchased by the corporation. If we calculate an amount, we get our outstanding share. So 228,000 minus 35,000 minus 14,000. That's going to give us 179,000 shares of outstanding stock or outstanding shares. However you think of it. It's, it's the number of shares outstanding. The number notice differs. Issued is 228. 179,000 is the outstanding shares. The number of outstanding. And that happens. That's very common, right? It's going to be less. Again, think of our diagram. Authorized is going to be greater than issued. Issued is going to be greater than outstanding when there's treasury stock involved. If there's no treasury stock involved, then the then the uh, outstanding and issued are equal. Because remember, the formula is issued minus treasury. So keep that in mind as well. Most corporations, there are treasury stock because they like to buy back their shares because you don't want to have all you know the owners out there. Plus, you might need it for stock options and things like that. So we've just calculated the issued shares and the outstanding share. So make sure you keep in mind these formulas and, and this respective diagram, the globe or the jawbreaker, however you like to think of it.